How's it going today everybody and welcome back to Shaner's Mechanic Life. Got a turbo engine, diesel or gas, and you're low on boost? You know, whether it's a, a Power Stroke, a Duramax, a Cummins, a Toyota or a Volkswagen. You might want to watch this video first before you go buying a new turbo. I'm going to give you a quick little crash course on how turbos work and what could cause them to not build enough boost. Well, what am I waiting for? Let's do this. This is basically how a turbo builds boost. Exhaust gases as they leave the engine flow into the turbine housing, spins a turbine wheel, and exits through the exhaust. That turbine wheel is connected to a shaft which goes through into the compressor section and it's attached to the impeller wheel. Air is drawn into the compressor section the impeller wheel spinning at a high rate of speed is being driven by the turbine wheel and it leaves the turbo under boost and goes to the engine and makes more power. So I'm going to remove the two sections so you can see the center section. So here's your turbine wheel. It's on a shaft and it's connected to the impeller wheel. So anytime you have a problem with either one of these sections, you're going to build little or even no boost at all. I'm going to show you some things to look out for that will cause low boost or no boost. And uh, you know, Bruno, the problem might not necessarily be in the turbo. So check these things out and it might save yourself the cost of a new turbo. Here we go. So this is the truck I'm going to be using for testing and showing you guys how to look for low or no boost problems. As you can see, it's, it's a little bit different, but in general, turbos all pretty much work the same way, whether it's gas or diesel. So here's your exhaust portion. So as you can see here, the exhaust, exhaust gas leaves the manifold, goes into the turbo, into the turbine housing, spins a turbine wheel, and then exits out to the back of the truck. What you want to check is make sure that exhaust pipes are not damaged, mufflers not plugged, and that exhaust gas has a relatively free flowing way to leave the engine. After all, if that exhaust gas is restricted in any way, it's not going to spin that turbine wheel as fast as it should. Now if you take the boot off the intake going to the turbo, you can see the impeller wheel. Now with the engine cold, I'm just going to move this housing here so you can see. You should be able to reach in there and spin. And it should be nice and free, no restrictions, and even give it a wiggle up and down for any play. Because if this center section is worn out, and it's binding or sticking or the bearings are seizing up again it's going to stick it's not going to spin as fast and it's not going to build as much boost next what you want to check is all your plumbing hoses and clamps leaving your turbo and run into the intake so look around all the clamps look for any signs of leaks any tears in the boots any swelling any obvious leaks on the pipe work your way along and then it goes to the charge air cooler now this will be mounted at the front of the engine usually in front of your radiator take a look at that for any cracks holes in it you know it is at the front of your vehicle so it could be hitting you know stones and stuff like that any obvious signs for leaks or damage 
Now on the other side of the vehicle, check the same thing. All your hoses, clamps, pipes, for any obvious holes, tears, or signs of leaks. Now go through, make sure all your clamps are tight. And one thing to watch out for, particularly with this style of clamp, you want to watch that the clamp isn't maxed out. You want to make sure it's tight, but these two halves aren't contacting. Because once they hit each other, that clamp's not going to get any tighter. Now one odd thing you might want to check, if you're unsure of the service history, like you don't know if anybody else has worked on it, you might want to pull some of these pipes off, pull the hoses off. Make sure there's no rags stuck in them. Because after all, if you got the system on, Generally, it's uh, good practice to plug the holes while you're working on it. So no debris or, you know, losing sockets, falling down. Don't make their way into the engine and cause damage. And if uh, someone doesn't remove that and they forget it in a pipe, it's going to be tough to find. Now, another place you could be losing boost is your EGR valve. EGR valve is exhaust gas recirculation valve. Basically, it takes a metered amount of exhaust and runs it back through the intake for emission control reasons. Now your intake and your exhaust is connected at this point. So if that EGR isn't seated right or leaking internally, you could be taking boost that your turbo is providing. It could be bleeding through right into the exhaust. Now it's kind of hard to test that without disassembling and looking at it, but uh, I'll uh, show you a way you might be able to track it down. You also want to make sure your engine is running properly, whether it be a gasoline engine or a diesel engine. If it's not running good and it's not providing enough power output, that exhaust gas flow isn't going to be what it should be and it would be developing lower boost. So make sure everything's running right, seems to be running nice and smooth and you don't have any noticeable misses or anything like that. Turbos regulate exhaust gas flow and boost pressure couple different ways depending on the turbo this one uses a wastegate so once the maximum boost is achieved a solenoid opens up this plunger and it bleeds off the exhaust gas flow into the exhaust bypassing the turbine wheel like this one it's binding and even if we're at seats it's not sealing right, you're going to be losing the exhaust gas flow and turbine speed. This turbo is what they call a variable geometry turbo. Basically the computer regulates it. As it sees proper boost, it'll actually change the pitch of the blades inside the turbo, causing less or more boost. and it'll go back and forth depending on what's needed for the driving conditions. What I've seen with these too is uh, the computer systems. If you've ever heard of uh, going in a D rate or limp in mode for cars and stuff like that, uh, if the computer sees a problem, what it'll do, it'll change the pitch of those blades. So this turbo will build little to no boost and therefore causing you to have low power and almost forcing you to bring it in and get your car fixed well if you've gotten to this point and haven't found out where your boost leak is or the cause of your low boost complaint might be time to pressure test the system you can get kits like this basically you cap off the system put shop air into it regulate the pressure you air up the system and you can start soaping down all the pipes and stuff for leaks now I can't remember where I got this. I've had it for a number of years. I don't even know what brand it is. But I'm pretty sure if you go on like Amazon or eBay or you know go to Harbor Freight, I'm sure they'll have a set very similar. It's got all sorts of different size adapters. Especially for the smaller stuff. Might be a good kit to have. Or if you're working on something where these adapters aren't big enough, 
if you have the bits and pieces kicking around, you can even Frankenstein yourself one together. Some different pipes, a regulator, a gauge, and a gate valve. But for this particular engine, I can use this kit. So let me show you how it works. So first thing you want to do is undo the clamp coming off the turbo and remove the pipe and the hose. Pipe. Find the adapter that fits the hose you're looking for. Push it all the way in and tighten the clamp securely. Now you take your regulator. Hook it up and put it aside. Now we're going to go around to the other side of the engine. Now this side you can do a couple different ways. The first way is work your way along the piping to the intake until you find the furthest rubber hose and undo the clamp. And then you take this end without the hole and cap it off. For this particular one, what I want to do is I want to actually pressurize the intake and EGR portions and stuff like that. So I'm just going to leave it hooked up to the engine just the way it is and then pressure it up. Now it's always good practice before you start pressurizing the intake and stuff like that. Go ahead and just take your oil cap off. That way if you do have some blow by and stuff like that you don't over pressurize your crankcase. So now what you do, grab your regulator and your shop air, plug it in. And then you set your regulator to somewhere in the middle range of what your boost system runs at. And then you open up the gate valve. Now what you want to be careful of is where you have that clamped off. You want to make sure that's not pointed at your head or at anybody else because if that pops off you're gonna to have to explain why you broke your glasses or you got a black eye. So once you've pressurized the system just get a spray bottle with some soapy water. I like to use just liquid dish detergent and just start spraying everything down. Every hose, every clamp, the intercooler, Go around both sides. So I'll just keep spraying everything down, every hose, every clamp, around the intake, and have a listen. Do you hear any leaks? Like I mentioned earlier about the EGR valve. You can see the bubbles. You can hear them. This thing needs the EGR valve. Source of our boost leak is a bad EGR valve. But just because we found that, you don't want to ignore the rest of this system. So go back and forth a couple different times. Look for other leaks, clamps, hoses, pipes, whatnot. Well, now that we've found the source of our leak, I can go ahead, order an EGR valve and some gaskets, get it changed out, and retest everything. Now, just a reminder, this uh, method works whether it's, you know, a gas or diesel engine, you know, whether it's a, a Duramax or a Power Stroke or an Isuzu or Cummins or anything like that. You know, the engines may be a little bit different, but just break the system down. Make some adapters, and you'll get it figured out. If you've gone through all this, and you still haven't found any boost leaks, or a source for your low boost pressure issue, then you know what? It might be time to pull the turbo and replace it. Or you can even pull the turbo and send it out and get repaired. Or 
take a look around your neighborhood. There might be uh, turbo repair shops. You know, they can fix it or rebuild it for a lot of times a fraction of the cost of a new one. You know, far too often people think they're looking at their boost gauge. Oh, I've got low boost. Oh, I need a turbo. You know, take some time. Troubleshoot everything. You know, you might not need a turbo. It's very expensive. You know, you might just have a, a loose clamp or a hole in the hose or, you know, EGR valve issue. Well, I hope you liked this video and I hope the information in it helps somebody out there save a bunch of money. I'd also like to thank one of my new subscribers, Seth Fulton. Thanks for subscribing. I appreciate all my new subscribers. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Hit that like button and subscribe. I got more videos coming. Anyway, have a good night everybody and thanks for watching.